trolling was popularized in 1572. But what if there was an even better mod that allowed creating ridiculous contraptions that ruined the multiverse? Such a mod is existent in Create Above and Beyond which has been suggested to me since the Mesoproterozoic Geological Leon. Anyways I have decided to play it to analyze the mod pack. It all begins in a rather unexceptional area, with a quest book introducing me to Create. But I was distracted by the fact that I could get free rewards simply by agreeing to everything. Which made me skip through most of the potentially useful information. Fortunately I was off to a good start because a generous person has unknowingly donated free stuff to me by leaving it in this unprotected area. Which included some basic create contraptions. Eventually I will need more and more of these contraptions to make a bafflingly complicated factory to manufacture a rocket out of whatever this is. Which is apparently the final goal of this mod pack. So the current order of business shall be exploring to find a suitable location for the I go by lots of names headquarters. AKA the speech next to ocean resources and other resources. Notable mention. This random lake of free slime, which will possibly be efficacious presently. You may remember that the first use of slime is usually to make a slime sling and slime boots. But this is 1.16 which I have not touched in months. And apparently 1.16 slime equipment is a scam because my purple slime only produced a useless slime sling that teleported between walls. Plus it has durability. I fell into a deep depression. That was until I looked in the quest book and noticed that there were pages for selling stuff and buying other stuff using pixelated bitcoins. And one thing I could sell, was a written book to acquire investments from imaginary corporate overlords. Luckily I had a book and quill from the abandoned free stuff, so I speed ran writing my literature masterpiece and claimed 15 free silver coins. And as the old saying goes, that man is richest whose pleasure are cheapest. And in the market page I saw one of my favorite things I could buy. Loot boxes. Immediately I ditched my dreams of building a functioning factory, so I could pursue true happiness. Unfortunately these loot box prices were far beyond my wealth. So I found a trade offer rewarding 32 bitcoin for music discs sold to an imaginary DJ. But unlike these corporate overlords, this DJ was willing to accept the trade infinite amount of times. Therefore if I farmed incalculable quantities of music discs, that will become transcendent consignments of Bitcoin. So I began preparations for music disc farming. I obtained basic equipment and began exploring caves to unearth various resources ranging from diamonds to iron to thingies left behind in abandoned mine shafts. When I returned to base I was a gaming trillionaire. But I have been fooled because iron ore only gives one third of an iron ingot. However the Bitcoin grind must endure. While the iron was smelting I dug three medium sized holes in the ground, two of which were covered in trap doors. These tunnels were then connected with a hallway with several blocks in between. When night time commenced, I lured a skeleton to trip and fall into the first tunnel, and lured a creeper to go into the second tunnel. I then stood here to trick the skeleton into killing the creeper to death, thus producing some music. Then I rinse and repeat it. In the end these discs were auctioned for a grand total of enough coins. Now I could finally indulge in the finer substances of the free market. Which included a corporate dinner all for the CEO of I go by lots of names. Which is me. And I purchased the barrel of patience, which is apparently an infinitely deep puzzle with a reward at the bottom. So I decided to buy it and test the product. After approximately 100 attempts I came to an incontrovertible realization. Perhaps the real reward was the journey to get the reward. Because these barrels also gave motivational quote paper and nutritious motivational food, as well as basically infinite barrels which could be used as storage in building blocks. So by constantly placing barrels, I could get infinite free blocks, food, and paper. This was far too overpowered for just two music discs worth of coins. So I began the next phase of my plan. I dumped all of my motivational paper into somewhere and began constructing my house out of my practically infinite supply of barrels. For the infinitely curious who are curious about the coding behind the barrel of patience. 
There is a 1 in 2.5 million chance where the barrel finally gives up and rewards the player with even more Bitcoin and some enchantments. So it would take the average person one month of non stop home packaging to find the reward. Anyways, now that I had a permanent residence and a decent supply of motivational food, I decided to actually begin playing with the create part of create above and beyond. To complete the first phase of create above and beyond I needed some basic mechanisms, which required some kelp, numerous clay, moderate and desired, and stupendous wood. I also slaughtered jellyfish to be smelted into even more slime. The imaginary voices were encouraging me to automate these basic resources using whatever these so-called contraptions are, but these resources were so common around my tropical base that I decided to spend 10 minutes obtaining them, rather than spending 1 hour to automate what would have taken 10 minutes. Anyways the next step is to combine kelp and clay to be smelted and mixed with and designed to create a slightly more tetragonic dimensional squares, which had remarkable uses including gears, shafts, and machine casings. AKA the core of everything related to create. I then finally created my first mechanism, completing the first game in phase. In order to power my future factories I would need a source of kinetic energy, which can be easily obtained by laying a water wheel flat on the ground and having a sideways river donut, reaching maximum efficiency. The kinetic energy can then be transferred with shafts and rotated around with gearboxes. But what shall I power with my water wheel? I converted my first basic mechanism into a press, which I connected to the water wheel and used to smash gold into plates for the unbelievably useful wrench. Instantly after getting it I took down the press and replaced it with my dream machine. The mechanical and radial chassis. When powered and connected to anything with slime, it will become a fidget spinner. But since I didn't have a lot of stuff to test it with, I decided to attach the mechanical chassis to the ground. After connecting dirt to my new mechanism and activating it, the ground below me turned into a massive carousel, causing everything on it to spin in an unescapable ground tornado vortex. But I realized that my ground fidget spinner had destroyed my water wheel. So I had to do a little bit of engineering to make my ground carousel 2.0. Which was somehow more deadly and inescapable. I was swung into a steel axis and was supposed to sustain several head injuries, but apparently I didn't get damaged from this. This was rather interesting physical behavior. So I used my wrench to increase the range of my mechanical chassis for even grander results. Which did not disappoint. That was when I realized. Bigger contraptions do not mean bigger kinetic energy usage. Because my water wheel did not seem to care how big the mechanical chassis range was. I realized that this could be world breaking. So instead of making complex machinery for the second chapter of this mod pack, I decided to continue my water wheel experimentation. With my new diamond pickaxe, I began mining copious amounts of andesite and obsidian to fund my scientific research. With the obsidian I launched an excursion into the nether dimension. I was considering purchasing a fortress compass for more bitcoin. But it was unnecessary because I spawned right next to a fortress. The plan was that if I ran out of blocks or food, I will simply look to the endless barrel for more motivational sustenance. Fortunately the nether fortress didn't only have blazes for free blaze powder. It also had shiny chests containing precious music discs which I instantly sold for more Bitcoin. After several near-death incidents and motivational items, I escaped the nether fortress using even more barrels, but I passed away after a foolish mistake. Luckily the crime scene is right outside my portal, and I still had all the blaze rods I needed. I then returned to the nether with a boat and a diamond sword to massacre various endermen, which provided pearl fragments for some reason. But after some analysis I realized this could be salvaged into real lender pearls. Now that I could create eyes of ender, it is time to reveal my final act of gaming. I will beat the ender dragon using only mechanical engineering. For this I brought along my motivational barrel, two water buckets, my bed, the contraption, and the corporate dinner. I then quantum triangulated a stronghold, which turned out to be right next to where I looted the abandoned base at the beginning. 
I drilled towards the core of the earth in this specific location and found myself in a cave that led directly to the portal room of the stronghold. This was magnificently splendid. After setting my spawn point in this room, I began the gaming. The first order of business was to set up an outpost in this sheltered area of the island. Which will have an infinite water source in my water wheel. But after constructing these I realized that the dragon could do a trick shot to somehow pollute my hidden base with deadly chemicals, causing Steve to do some dance moves and fall to his unremarkable death. However I made a comeback in 6000 milliseconds. After that distraction I set up my contraption the same way I did in the overworld. Except this time, I changed the game settings to allow for infinite mechanism sizes to push this mod to its limit. The chassis was also horizontal, so my game theory is it should take a slice of the end island and spin it like a tortilla. And the theory was proven true. When I ascended the island I was met with a simply sensational exhibition of the boundless human spirit. This water wheel was doing the implausible. It was stupidly overpowered for how cheap and simple it was to set up. But this only made me more curious. I returned to the outpost to deposit all my items into the motivational barrel, and sacrificed myself as test subject to investigate this. The further I went, the faster the island slice rotated due to centrifugal force or something. Essentially becoming a multi-dimensional baseball bat. For some reason it wouldn't launch me when I stood in a batting position. So I decided to launch myself onto the bat, causing me to be instantly vaporized by kinetic energy. When I returned to the outpost to stop this contraption, reality itself sighed a breath of relief when the baseball bat was shut down. Except it stopped in a rather awkward position. Anyways after dodging this disaster I came up with a new plan. This obsidian pillar had to go. I marked its coordinates and returned to the water wheel to extend the shaft to the same X coordinate as the pillar. Since mechanisms are unable to move end crystals, I had to resort to rotating only half of the obsidian pillar. Which somewhat worked. The contraption had grown so big that the game simply deleted everything in it, leading to tens of thousands of casualties. On the bright side this was a rather effective x-ray for delectable and resources. And this was surprisingly not deadly to travel through. I had basically phased through the end island. But when I shut everything down, the missing blocks magically reappeared, except this time, the end island was now separated by yet another massive wall that not only blocked this end crystal from being useful, but also caused the ender dragon to have a mental breakdown. It was now phasing through the wall and probably sustaining several head injuries. But you may have noticed that no real damage was really done. This time however, I will divert the power of the water wheel, to turn the end island by its vertical axis. As expected, an entire layer of the end island disappeared, leaving a massive pancake of air. But the dragon was not so pleased about this. The dragon somehow made it past these two defensive walls and fireballed me not once, but three times, causing me to die on top of a mysterious air pancake. And when I returned, my items were nowhere to be seen. The incredibly glitchy invisible end island mechanism caused all my items to vaporize on top of it. I now had no way to stop this nightmare contraption. Except. My motivational barrel was still with me. The final hope for humanity. I used it to clog up the water wheel, causing the contraption to shut down. And when it did, the end island was completely ruined. A whole new pancake of endstone and bisected obsidian pillars spawned next to the original island. Which was hundreds of blocks wide and had its whole ecosystem of endermen. This was truly magnificent. Remember to like subscribe ring notification bell comment the video turn off ad blocker. Unfortunately this cost me everything in my inventory. And I will end it here to recover from this tragic loss. But I might continue playing when I feel like it. Once again this is a reminder that memberships will be disabled on October 10th. But shout out to the current members anyways.